Here in the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We're joined by Alan Saunders of SteelersNow.com. We want to talk about Graham Barton, who's been in for a top 30 visit with the Steelers. And if he's being overlooked as a real first round option, that more on the Brandon IU po- trade possibility. And are the Steelers still in play for linebacker? That and more. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things on the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes, as well as our bonus content. Thank you for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side, and, that, and as a big fan of Monopoly Go, it's a mobile hit twist on a, on a classic game of Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. More on them later. As I said before, we're joined by Alan Saunders of SteelersNow.com. It's been a minute since we have Alan on. we got to get him back on. It's now officially a week from the draft. It starts next Thursday, seven days away. We've been breaking it down. Alan, is the anticipation killing you because it's killing me? No. <laughs> no. Um, I don't know that the anticipation is killing me. This like this week where nothing happens is killing me though. Like I'm I'm <laughs> like I, you know, as a reporter, I like I love covering the draft. It is probably my favorite thing to cover. I think it requires so many skills to be really good at it. You know, you have to be a human interest reporter and find a way to make people care about these people and their stories. You have to be a, a, you know, a reporter with sources and find out what teams and players and agents are thinking and get the behind the scenes information. You have to kind of be a scout of your own to have your own feelings about who's going to work and who isn't and, and to be able to sort of um, evaluate what teams are thinking. Uh, But you get to this point where everybody kind of knows all they're going to know Nobody wants to say anything to you. Nobody wants to tell you anything. Uh, There's just an information gap here where Mm -hmm. it's like, okay, everybody has their stuff, and now everybody's shutting up and getting to work. And uh, as a reporter, it's very boring when no one will talk to you. So (laughs) I want to know more, and I can't. So maybe the anticipate – I could deal with the anticipation if we were still getting information, right, during the trickle of the draft process. Right. But but this but the the boar is is what's killing me. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. I want to ask you about Graham Barton because the Steelers brought him in for a top thirty visit. Arthur Smith, the offensive coordinator, visited his pro day, so not the top brass, but still an important person visited his pro day. And he was a combine interview, so that's not technically the Tomlin Trinity of the top brass with the combine interview and the top thirty visit, but it's pretty doggone close. And Graham Barton is a guy who tested extremely well, uh, you know, at his, at his pro day. He ran a great 40-yard dash time. According to relative athletic score, he's a 9.99. So he's a freak of an athlete for an interior offensive lineman. Um, you know, he's listed as a tackle by some, but a lot of people have talked about his, his potential more as a guard and even as a center, as he does have snapping experience. But Allen, we've seen the Steelers try to force a guy into the center position before. Is his size and athleticism one that should turn Turn away anyone who doubts whether Graham Barton could be a great fit for the Steelers at center if they pick him at 20th overall. Well, I mean, I look, I think Graham Barton's a center. I mean, he did all his pre-draft work as a center. He could play guard, probably. Um, it, he's not gonna, he doesn't have the arm length to really be a tackle in the NFL. I think he knows that. He certainly won't be a left tackle. Maybe somebody might try him on the right side, but. Uh, he played center his freshman year of college. This isn't right. some like you know pie in the sky projection. I mean, he's done it before. It's been a couple of years, but this is an obvious move. I don't think that you know pretty much everybody is going to move him inside somewhere. Uh, I don't think it's a particularly risky one when you look at the kind of player he is, uh, the traits. You know, he's he's a polished prospect. It is not like you're taking someone that is. Uh, wild and and untamed and unsure and and also going to move him positions you know 
Um, I wouldn't want to move Amarius Mims around, right? There's a guy with eight yeah. games played. You know, this is a guy with uh, 39 career starts at Duke. Like, he's a very, very polished player, um, but also still has, I think, maybe a little bit more athletic upside than, say, like a guy like Zach Frazier, for example. Um, and so I think he is kind of the best of both worlds if you're looking for – someone to play right away, someone that still has athletic upside, someone that you feel confident in being able to you know, play the center position. I'm just not sure about 20. It's probably the highest I could see him being drafted. I don't know that he'll go a lot later than that, but anytime you're kind of at the very front edge of someone's sort of draft envelope, um, you know, there's a reason that should give you some pause, right? And so right. we'll see if the Steelers really like him at 20 or if they're looking at him – as a potential trade back option. Yeah, that's where I'm kind of looking at things with Grant Barton is you and I have talked about a lot on this show is that like if they get a center, they're probably going to have to overpay for overpay for one just on, on, a, on positional value because they're drafting at 20. 20 is going to be a spot where there's a lot of great tackles on the board, you know, or corners, or you're going to have a, a pick at two prime positions, ones that kind of traditionally rank over the importance of center. But you still want to get a good center in this draft who can be a difference maker for you in the long run. And that could be tricky because you might not, you might lose out on Barton, Jackson Powers, Johnson, and Zach Frazier, three of the top guys. Uh, and, you know, if, if you don't pick, one by the a, to pick pick one before your 51st overall pick and if you don't pick one of the 51st overall pick there might be a question that Cedric Van Pran Granger is is off the board and so that's kind of the classic question that you're still running into here uh, I, I've seen a lot of mock drafts that say that, that say like if when if you go if the Steelers go with a tackle or a corner the Dolphins right after them go go for a center type player or, or or go for a Graham Barton to take him off the board and then you can see teams like the Cowboys and other teams down the list there run take a run at the center position to kind of ruin it for the Steelers but I think that's where the Steelers have to judge is that can can they get the tackle that they really want I talked to Jim Wexel earlier this week and he thinks that even if they get uh, you know, one of these top tackles, it's not a guarantee that they become a starter this year because of the Steelers' confidence in Dan Moore Jr. So would it be better to get the player at center who's going to start this year and then maybe take a flyer on a tackle in the second round uh, for other guys who aren't as surefire picks as some of these guys in the first round but still have, uh, you know, a decent ceiling? I don't think so. And I think it's because of the depth of this tackle class at the top, right? I mean, it's not like it's three or four rounds deep but there are players that are going to be available at 20 that are not usually available at 10 there mm. are going to be eight maybe first round tackles like that is a ton so you are getting you know teams that don't need a tackle are letting these guys fall down the board unless there's a lot of trade-ups which there could be um you know but if you're looking at the board kind of the way it sits right now you're going to get tackles that fall to where the Steelers pick at 20 that just do not usually fall. Like a player of the caliber of Amarius Mims is normally taken much closer to 15 than 20. A player of the caliber of J.C. Latham you know, would never be talking about him making it to the Steelers at 20. And now it's maybe looking like it's a little less than a coin flip. A guy like Tyler Guyton, who it seems like the Steelers are not even really – considering that hard because it seems like they're going to have a better player is normally the player more like the player you get around 20. And so because of the, the depth of the top of the tackle class guys get pushed down the board. It's not the case at center. It's not a very good center class. Like you're, you're reaching the Steelers are going to have to reach at center. I think that's pretty clear, but you try to navigate the pools of talent the best you can. And there is a, for example, there's a deep pool of talent and tackle in the first round. There's deep pools of talent at wide receiver that are going to leak into the second and third round. So where does the center come in? I don't know. I, I think they'd like it to be in the second round. They might have to trade up to make that happen. But you're not going to get the same kind of impact player at tackle, even compared to the draft slot, if you wait and, and address it later on. And you're not doing that if you use your first round pick at center or at wide receiver. So I think tackle is probably the best way for them to maximize the value at a pick 20. It's certainly a need. I agree with Wex. I think if it's Amarius Mims, probably less than 50, 50, he starts week one. Latham, I think would start right away. I don't, I, I doubt Guyton would uh, maybe not even all of the first year. So I don't, I don't have a problem with that though. Look, the Steelers have done an uncharacteristic thing by going into the draft without really any options at center. Um, but I don't expect them 
to change their MO in the draft and start reaching just because they've done that. I, I really don't think they're going to do that. I feel you on that. Uh, you mentioned J.C. Latham be a start. I'm going to throw two other names at you at you here. Fuaga or F- uh, Faltenu. Either of those guys. Are those guys day one starters if they come in over Dan Moore Jr. and they and they take the place somewhere where wherever Broderick Jones will be? I think Taliesi Fuaga is probably a day one starter. Troy Faltanu, uh, maybe 50-50. I mean, I think he would be early in his rookie year anyway a starter. Um, those are pretty polished guys, especially run blocking. Like Fuaga's run blocking is elite. I think that's that's why I would go with him right away. Latham mm-hmm. is like, you know, for look, he has athletic limitations, but he's a gigantic guy and he's pretty much as good as he's gonna get. There's not really any reason to hold him back. Fontano is kind of like maybe a little bit in between, uh, where like technically, um, you know, maybe has some things he could work on. I, you know, I, the Steelers want to run the ball, and I think. Their desire to run the ball is the reason we're going to see offensive line taken probably two of the top three picks, maybe the top two picks. Uh, and so, like, the things that would give you pause in doing that often are young linemen and their pass protection responsibilities. I, just, I don't I don't think that's where their focus is. I think they want to run the football. That's why you move Broderick Jones to left tackle. That's why you do all this. And so, um, I day one is tough at tackle. It's a lot easier to see day one at center because of the lack of depth, but I think there's a couple guys out there in this class that could do it. I hear you on that. I want to switch topics to the Brandon Ayuk because it does seem like there's more smoke to the fire of the Steelers wanting to make a trade for Brandon Ayuk. We'll talk more about that and other aspects of the NFL draft here in the Locked On Steelers podcast. Chris Carter, Alan Saunders, stick with us. We'll be right back. I want to remind you, this show is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I've been told I'm a competitive person, and that all kind of stems back to my old game nights where I would play play my, uh, games with my family growing up. We like to play different uh, different favorites, but the Super Bowl for the family was always Monopoly. Whenever I won that, I'd walk around the, of the house like I had a championship belt over my shoulder all week long. Nowadays, I can carry that championship belt every day because I play Monopoly Go. It's the new mobile game that's been downloaded 150 million times with a new twist on Monopoly where you can play on 100 different Monopoly boards in crazy locations, build up your own cities, and bring in big money. Best part? I can still beat my family and friends anytime. Whether I charge them rent for iconic Monopoly properties like Boardwalk or or, or, or go after their, the money in their vaults, you can, you can easily... Get, get, get big winnings in Monopoly Go right now and, and rise up the Monopoly leaderboards. Get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, Chris Carter here with Alan Saunders of SteelersNow.com. Alan. I want to get into uh, Ian Rappaport's uh, note that he put out there saying that the Steelers do have interest in Brandon Ayuk. Is this simply a, hey, the Steelers made a call and that's just about it? Or do you think the Steelers are serious players here for Brandon Ayuk and are trying to figure out a way to wiggle in to get him without coughing up some major draft pick capital? I think the Steelers would seriously like to have Brandon Ayuk. I don't think that's going to be the reason that he's traded like i mean like the san francisco 49ers do not want to trade him um they've right. said as much they would like to work out a contract extension i have a hard followed time... them on instagram i know, I, know. <laughs> I have a hard time seeing them go from very certain at the nfl owners meetings what was that three weeks ago that yeah. we don't want to trade brandon ayuk to in one more week trading brandon ayuk based on not being able to come to a contract negotiation that doesn't even seem like there's a lot of urgency to it. Like it does um, like where, how are we getting reports about, Oh, the, the, this is what the 49ers offered. This is what I said he wants. Like, these are the things that we hear when people are in depth in contract negotiations and we're not seeing any of it. Sure. Seems like the 49ers are a front office that are focused on getting their draft in order right now. And are going to worry about Brandon Ayuk's contract when they worry about it. And so if they're not even aggressively pursuing that option right now, how do they get to the point where they're so fed up with the negotiations that they're ready to trade him? I just don't see it. Maybe closer to the season, 
I could see it happening. I just don't know how it happens between now and the draft. And if it doesn't happen between now and the draft, then the Steelers need to go get a wide receiver somehow, some way, from somewhere, whether that's multiple high draft picks, trade with someone else. I don't know that they have the luxury of sitting around waiting. So I, I don't I don't understand how I got it doesn't seem like he's particularly available. I'm sure they would like to have him. And you know, the other thing is even if they he does become available. I think it's questionable whether they'd be willing to meet the price that the 49ers would want. It was reported that they asked the Jaguars about a like a 17 and a player. Um, the Steelers don't even have that. Like, uh, you know, I, that that's 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 a trade offer from a team that does not want to make a trade. Like, so unless that changes, I don't know how he ends up in Pittsburgh. I'm with you on that. I, I feel that I, I've I've been a person who like listen I respect Brandon Ayuk and I think that he would be certainly a great like in a dream world that would be an awesome addition to the Steelers offense it would be a great uh, veteran leader for the receiver room that could pair well with George Pickens be the route runner but here's my thing is that not only would you have to give up considerable draft co- consideration let's even say the St- that the Niners are willing to just take not even just a pl- not even a player just just a second round pick. You're tip trading away a second round pick there, and that that would be a great compensation. But then you're also going to have to pay Brandon Ayuk serious money in the coming years, and that's going to tie up things that I think are going to bring some other tough tough decisions to light. Like, can you afford to pay George Pickens long term? Can you afford to pay you know Pat Fryermuth long term? Can you afford to you know to keep some of the key players that you're that you want to pay on defense? Joey Porter Jr. is going to cost some money in a few years. Um, and I'm not saying like oh, that, that again, this should be a complete deterrent. But to me, it's adding up all those factors with the fact that you're giving up a second round pick in a year where that second round pick, and again, this is just this hypothetical, that second round pick would be would be a potential center that we that we were just talking about, a position that they need right now. It could also be a heck of a playmaking wide receiver that would that wouldn't cost them nearly as much money. Granted, that player would have to develop, but it would put them in a situation that would give them more flexibility there. That's why I just I lean against the idea of the trade for Brandon Ayuk right now, unless you get some crazy great value. Like like if if the Niners gave him up for what the uh, the Bills gave up for Stephon Diggs, then I'm like, okay, absolutely, you can't pass that up. I'll worry about the finances later. But when you combine that with the need to give up a day one or day two pick, that's where I'm just like, uh, I, I think this, there's too many needs in such a deep, strong draft class that could help with the, what the Steelers are trying to do right now. And that's fix a lot of the recent misses, replenish the roster in a lot of areas. And it, it, and also this team isn't one superstar playmaker wide receiver. And I'm not even sure Brendan Ayuk's a superstar. He's a very good playmaker wide receiver, but they're not one even that away from winning a Super Bowl. And if this was if this was a team with a great old line, the quarterback ready to go, a defense raring raring to go and you, and you had other talents and, and that was the one thing you needed, I would totally get it, but the Steelers aren't that right now. Yeah, why aren't the Buffalo Bills making this trade by That's the way? That's a very so, good question. It's like how could the Steelers possibly offer more than them? Because this is all the Bills need, yeah. right? Like I uh, yeah. Um here's here's two okay, two things. The first one is the Steelers have too many needs. They need a center. They need a tackle. They need a slot cornerback, and they need a future cornerback because Dante Jackson's only here for one year. They need a future defensive tackle because Cam Hayward's 35 and entering the last year of his deal. And they need two wide receivers, okay? They have four top draft picks and $12 million to do all that with. That's, they can make a little bit more room, okay? But that's really that's what they've got. If you use one of those top draft picks and – $20 million on Brandon Ayuk. I don't know how you get the rest of the roster in like true contender fashion with what's left. I, exactly. I just don't see it. And so then if you're actually a year away, then this isn't the year to make that deal, right? Like you could have signed Calvin Ridley in free agency, spent the money, had, I don't know, 80% of the player and not traded away the draft pick. Like I, you, you could also draft Brian Thomas in the first round or AD Mitchell or whatever Mm -hmm. and get, I don't know, maybe a coin flip at 80% of the player and not spent the money and spent the money elsewhere and gone and signed Aaron Brewer, Mitch Morris and locked up the center position, right? Like it just doesn't seem to jive with what they've done. The one thing that I think makes sense if you're looking at this trade is, is if it's for 2025 draft picks, 
Like, let's like mm. you said a second. Okay. Well, what if they wait until after the draft? We get into July. He's holding out. The 49ers are in training camp. He things are getting intransigent. Okay. Let's move. Um, let's trade uh, the Steelers 2025 first for the 49ers second. Okay. And, and I, all right. So they move trade out yeah. of the first round next year, but you get Brandon. I in July this year. Now I think that's a trade that starts to make some sense. It, it makes sense from the 49ers standpoint because they've given the negotiation process some time. They've mm-hmm. let themselves get frustrated and get to be motivated sellers. And it lets the Steelers use the draft assets that they have this year to get the rest of the team around him. Right. I mean, I think that that is, that's the one place in this move. I think it starts to make sense. I am on the same wavelength as you though. So like I question whether paying Mar- market value for a top wide receiver is ever going to be a good idea in this offense. Like they are, they really going to get the most out of paying for Brandon Ayuk, taking him from one of the best possible environments for a wide receiver in the NFL in that Shanahan offense, and then come ask him to block linebackers for Arthur Smith. Like I just, you know, are they going to get $25 million a year out of Brandon Ayuk, even if they get him and pay him that, I think it's pretty questionable. And the Steelers are so good at drafting wide receiver. Why wouldn't you just continue to lean on that strength and spend your money somewhere where you're not that good at it? Absolutely. That's just, again, that's just where, I, where I'm at. And I, I actually kind of like the, the idea of trading for next year's draft picks a bit more. And also a first, second round swap that you don't even lose a pick. You do lose a first round pick, but you get actually another pick in this draft class. Um, so that's where I was. That's where I'm like, hmm, I'm feeling you there. We'll revisit this as, as as we get closer to the draft. But I want to talk about the linebacker position because the Steelers have brought in some more linebackers in their top 30 visits, which shows they're still looking at that position. We've kind of neglected it in, in recent weeks. We'll talk about that here and more on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Chris Carter, Alan Saunders, stick with us. We'll be right back. But first, I want to remind you, this show is also brought to you by Yahoo Finance. Wouldn't it be great if you could see all of your investment and retirement accounts in just one place? With Yahoo Finance, you can consolidate your views from multiple accounts into one hub and access the expert analysis you need to tend to your entire portfolio with confidence. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. They are the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news or original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. Whether you're a seasoned investor or, or looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor. That's yahoofinance.com. The number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with Alan Saunders of SteelersNow.com. Alan, the Steelers are still looking at linebacker despite all the focus that we've put on on corner, on tackle, on center, on wide receiver, and it kind of, and especially since they signed Patrick Queen. When they signed Patrick Queen, I was like, look, they might draft a linebacker, but it's not going to be to like maybe the fourth round, and that's where I was kind of there. So I started, I stopped looking as much at Peyton Wilson as much as I really like Peyton Wilson, but they brought him for a top 30 visit, and then as early as Wednesday, or recent as Wednesday, they brought in Junior Colson, a guy that you and I talked about who we both liked on tape and we think the Steelers like at, at linebacker here. How early, if the Steelers were to be our serious lookers for, for, for linebacker, how early do you think a, a pick at linebacker comes for the Steelers in this draft class? Earlier than people think. If you Ooh. look at the uh, NFL mock draft database uh, list at linebacker, and here's the top guys, okay? Uh, Edrin Cooper from Texas A&M. Steelers saw him at the Shrine Bowl, did a formal with the com- at him with a combine. Peyton Wilson, NC State, saw him at the Senior Bowl, in for a top 30 visit. Junior Colson, formal at the combine, top 30 visit. Mike T and Omar at his pro day. Jeremiah Trotter, formal at the combine. Mike T and Omar at his pro day. Cedric Gray, North Carolina, Senior Bowl. Aaron Curry went to his pro day. Tom Eikenberg, Ohio State, formal at the combine. Curry at his pro day. Trevin Wallace, Kentucky, Senior Bowl. Curry at his pro day. They saw Marist Leofalu at Notre Dame and 
Eddie Ulfoshio from Washington at the Senior Bowl. Uh, like they've seen every single linebacker that's going to get drafted before the fourth round. They've they've been in on all of them. So I mean, I look. I laid out the the positions that I think are the top needs. I think it's tackle, center, corner, two wide receivers, and defensive tackle. But the Steelers are telling us that they are going to take a linebacker in there somewhere, uh, just based on the the obvious cluster of where they've shown interest in these guys. Uh, certainly. And, and I, I think it would behoove them to get some of these guys that would be a good young linebacker that there wouldn't be pressure on whoever they get to start right away because you got Patrick Queen and I think Landon Roberts will be solid. And then this way, if Cole Holcomb isn't wor- isn't working out because of his injury, um, then there can there can be other you can have another answer. there ready to go. And if Cole Holcomb is great, is good to go. Great. Then you have four working linebackers and you don't have to depend on a Mark Robinson or a Michael Walker or whoever else that they're, they bring off the practice squad or, or that, that, that isn't exactly a prime position there. Um, I, I personally like Junior Colson a lot. I think he'd be a very good run fit you know, help against stop, stopping that. And that's where I think that the, they, they could use some help there. But I also, I love Peyton Wilson. I just don't know if Peyton, Peyton Wilson's going to fall to a place where you could reasonably take a linebacker. When we're talking about their need for tackle and center and wide receiver, you know, a corner, maybe they can wait a little bit later for. But it just feels like one of, two of those three positions need to be addressed in the first in the first two rounds maybe the third round is when it comes into play I, I i personally think if they were able to wait to the fourth and get a cedric gray out of north carolina i really like cedric gray i think that would be an amazing fit for what they're trying to do here and it would allow them their first four picks to go after those top positions that we're talking about but i also hear you that man if Junior Colson is that guy and he now has the Tomlin Trinity of the, com- the combine invite, the, the top brass at his pro day and the uh, um, uh, the top 30 visit, that that make, that would make a lot of sense to replenish the roster. It just would be an interesting fit with all the other needs that they got going on right now. Yeah, I mean, I and the other part of this that's interesting to me is, you know, the Steelers have the, they have four guys under contract, right? So, I mean, traditionally you would look and say like, yeah, it's probably not that big of a need. But you have the Holcomb injury. We yeah. don't really know like when he's going to be available yet, or at least the Steelers are saying they don't know when he's going to be available yet. And the other part of this that's very interesting to me is I think the change to the kickoff rule is going to dramatically shift the kind of people that you want on special teams roles. Like, I think – the days of like slender corners and wide receivers being your top special teamers, guys like Miles Boykin, guys like James Pierre, like they don't have to go run down the field to cover a kickoff anymore. Now you have to be able to tackle, mirror, get off a block. And I think it's going to mean more linebackers in the mix on game day. So uh, the idea of this team dressing five linebackers doesn't seem crazy to me. Even though Mark Robinson's a good special teamer, I think there's a spot there for a guy that will get a helmet every day. And you know, look at some of these guys. I think you know, look, Peyton Wilson would be elite special teamer day one if they could. You know, he has probably the worst injury history of any prospect of ever I can remember. Um, like I. He's been hurt like five of the last six years or something like that. Um, Maybe he falls into the fourth round. Maybe he, you know, he's somebody that they could grab. I really like Cedric Gray from North Carolina. Um, I I like some of these other guys too, that, uh, that Aaron Curry was out scouting Tommy Eichenberg. They love their NFL bloodlines. His brother is in the league as a lineman. Um, Trevin Wallace from Kentucky is an interesting guy with some athleticism that uh, that Aaron Curry went to go scout. I'm a little skeptical of Junior Colson. I understand the the the, the you know that they're showing strong interest here. Uh, I just think to me he's a second round pick, and I can't see linebacker going that early, right? Like I just right. I just can't. But look, one of these guys is going to fall. I think this is not a great linebacker class, and I you know. With, with Wilson's injury history, it could certainly be him. I do think the Steelers are going to gonna pull the trigger on one of these guys probably before people think they will. I th- I think that it's certainly something to keep an eye on for when they're gonna when they're gonna do it, and we know like the Steelers like traditionally they want to have the linebacker position solid. And frankly, every time the Steelers have won a Super Bowl, their linebackers have been very good. Heck, every time they've been to a Super Bowl, their linebackers have been very good. And so, 
I think I think that's part of it is trying to fix a position. And if you're looking at this defense, if this and I've said this for years, if you can if they're they have the secondary with Minka Fitzpatrick, Joey Porter Jr., I think they could use another corner out there to work with Dante Jackson and maybe Deshaun Elliott can be a really good strong safety. And then with your defensive front, if the if the Keanu Benton continues to emerge, you still have Cam Hayward, TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith. If you can just connect those two units with a really good linebacker group, that can make your defense elite, not just top 10, but I mean elite and i talked about that with ryan shazier just about like the uh on the north shore drive podcast for wednesday earlier this week uh for the post gazette go check that out if you haven't and linebackers and finding guys like that are so important to what they want to do because it allows the steelers to attack be more aggressive and disguise more of what they want to do so that offenses make more mistake you combine that with an offense that can run the ball, that can possess the ball better, and can score at a decent rate. Doesn't have to be top 10, just you know, middle of the pack, somewhere around there. And that could be your key to being a serious contender much sooner rather than later. Yeah, I and mean, I think it I think it makes a lot of sense. And I think specifically guys like Colson and Wilson are they're good athletes. If you look at what the Steelers have been prioritizing in the draft under uh, Andy Weidel and Omar Khan, that they certainly fit the sort of profile of what the team has been looking for. Absolutely. He's Alan Saunders of SteelersNow.com. Alan, let people can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. Are we done already? I feel like it when it's you and me, it just goes so fast. It goes, it goes fast. It just it Listen, I, I can't have Ross breathing down my neck because we got another 45-minute episode. Shout out Ross Jackson. Uh, A Saunders underscore PGH, PGH, Steel, uh, PGH Steelers now, SteelersNow.com. Um, my podcast with Zachary Smith, Steelers Afternoon Drive. We'll have Chris Carter back on probably after the draft. Uh, we've been we've been doing our thing with uh, with me and having our our other Steelers Now writers, Nick Farabaugh and and Derek Bell in for the draft, and uh, we'll get back to uh, me, Smitty, and friends after the draft, and and through probably May and June. So we'll get back into that, and uh, yeah, that's it. Absolutely. He's Alan Saunders. I'm Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Read my work at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, post-gazette.com. Find me here on the Locked on Steelers podcast every day, Monday through Friday on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to this channel to get all of those episodes. Also, a reminder, if you haven't heard me say this in other places, I will be doing a live draft show from Mike's Beer Bar, the best bar in all of Pittsburgh, with all of our Post-Gazette staff there doing a live draft show Thursday and Friday next week. So if you want to come and interact with me or just or see my live reactions to that that'll be the place to go there also be a live stream that you'll be available to watch but make sure that you're there if you want to check check out the draft with me and some of our great post gazette writers there back tomorrow with more on your pittsburgh steelers right here on the locked on steelers podcast 